This is my new camera bag, and I actually think it's the best compact travel bag out there for carrying anything, not just camera gear. If you've been watching my channel for a while, then you've seen me tease this bag over the past few videos, and that's because I've been taking a full month to really test it out and make sure that it's the perfect bag for me, and I'm convinced that it is. I have 13 reasons why this is a really great bag, and I'll be sharing them with you in this video. So first of all, the name of this bag is the Mindshift Photocross 13 backpack. Don't confuse it with the sling version because that does exist, but I like the backpack version and I'll explain more about that later on in this video. So Mindshift is a product line that's part of the Think Tank camera bag company. Mindshift gear is a little bit more rugged compared to Think Tank's sleeker, more urban looking bags. I've actually been using Think Tank camera bags ever since I started my professional photography career over 10 years ago. And even though I've tried other products and brands, I keep coming back to Think Tank because their bags are so well made and they really make features that are super useful and I find that it's something that other camera bags don't necessarily do as well as Think Tank does. So with that, let me tell you about the 13 features that I love about this bag and they're features that don't apply just to this bag. They're features that I look for in all of my camera bags. So the first is a backpack. I need that now for even weight distribution because I used to use shoulder bags. That was my very first Think Tank bag was the Urban Disguise bag. And I still love that bag, but it has been killing my shoulders. So I can't do shoulder bags anymore. I then moved on to a sling bag and those are better than shoulder bags, but they still weigh down on one shoulder more so than the other. And after carrying camera gear for so long, I can't do sling bags either. I then moved on to a wheeled camera bag, which kind of looks like a suitcase, but it carries camera gear specifically. And so the one that I've been using and I still use today is also by Think Tank. This video is not sponsored by the way, I just really love Think Tank products and I've always bought them. But the one that I'm using is the Think Tank Airport Advantage, which I've done another video about this bag. It's really fantastic if you're looking for a wheeled suitcase style bag. But the reality is I don't always, it's not always convenient to wheel a bag around and I don't always need to carry that much stuff with me. So I'm going back to a backpack because I want something that is relatively compact but still ergonomic. So number one must be a backpack. Number two must have chest straps or sternum straps because they're really important to help keep some of that weight off of your shoulders. And so this bag does have adjustable chest straps which is really useful. Oh and if you're curious about what this is, it's a quick release system that I talked about in another video, the Ulanzi Claw. So check out that video if you want to learn more about this. But more than that, it has waist straps. And so I've been wanting the waist straps because that really helps distribute the weight more evenly across your whole body. So it puts a little bit more pressure on your waist, but it takes all of that weight off of your shoulders. And so this bag has waist straps that are actually removable. You don't have to keep them on the bag. So bonus points for having removable waist straps. But the reality is a lot of the other backpacks that I was looking at didn't even have waist straps. A lot of them are coming with the chest straps, but waist straps are rather hard to find on camera backpacks. Feature number four, must have good adequate back padding. And so this isn't the thickest back padding that I've ever seen, but it's actually pretty supportive. And it's also a little bit breathable, not as breathable as like Osprey bags. I would love to see Osprey make a camera bag. But yeah, it's good enough. It's better than the competing bag, the one that I've been using prior to this bag, my Peak Design 20 liter zip bag, which I've always had a love-hate relationship with Peak Design, where I love the concepts of their products, but the actual application of them has always been, you know, I haven't been 100% happy with them. And that's true for this backpack. This is actually the second Peak Design backpack that I've owned. I used to have the non-zip version of this backpack, but I went to the zip version. I can tell you more about that in another product review video of this backpack. In fact, the back padding is not really padded at all, at least in comparison to the Mindshift bag. And so comfort is the number one reason why I no longer use my Peak Design backpack. I actually have this backpack for sale if anyone is looking to purchase one. 
The fifth feature that I looked for in my camera bag was being lightweight without carrying any gear. There are some bags out there where if you look at their standalone weight before you even add your camera gear, they're really heavy and so it just weighs a lot on your shoulders and so I wanted a pretty lightweight bag just by itself and so this Mindshift bag is 2.65 pounds or 1.2 kilos before you even add your camera gear. In comparison, my Peak Design bag weighs 3.75 pounds or 1.7 kilos without any gear inside of it. The sixth feature that I looked for in my camera bag was side access to my camera gear, or just being able to access my camera gear without putting the bag down on the floor. There are some bags that only give you access from the top, some bags make you put them down on the floor and unzip the back or unzip the front, and that just gets your gear all dirty. And so side access was really important to me so that I could access my camera gear without putting my bag down and getting it dirty. Feature number seven was being spacious, but not too big, so carry-on friendly. And so this bag is one of the smallest camera backpacks that I've seen out there. It's 12 liters. And honestly, I used to think I needed 15 to 20 or even 25 liter bags. And there are quite a few options of those sizes out there. But now that I'm shooting 100% mirrorless, I am finding that my gear is a lot smaller than when I used to shoot with DSLRs. And so having smaller gear, carrying a little bit less, I just don't need a giant backpack. 12 liters has turned out to be the perfect amount for the types of camera gear that I use. There is actually a 15 liter version of this bag, which sometimes I kind of wish that I got in a 15 liter, which I'll tell you about in one of the features down below. But 12 liters so far is working out really well for my size. I think it complements my body size really well and doesn't appear too bulky whenever I'm wearing this backpack. And despite being 12 liters or relatively small, it can actually hold quite a bit of gear. Let me show you what all fits inside of this bag. So this bag only has a big side pocket to open and here you have these little internal organization pockets. There are two little sections here with zippers on both ends. Right now the only thing I have in them are my business cards. And then we have my flash. So I just got uh, newer external speed light flashes. I used to use Canon back when I shot Canon, but now that I'm 100% Sony, went for a Godox flash. I can tell you more about this in other videos, so leave a comment down below if you wanna know more about my speed light flash. And then in here we have my main camera gear. So I have two camera bodies. Both of them are full frame Sony cameras. The first one is my Sony a7R III with the Sony 20 millimeter f1.8 lens on it. And my second camera, which is now my main camera because I think this is the best camera I've ever used. This is the Sony a7 IV with the Sony 55 millimeter f1.8 lens. Also, I think the best lens that I've ever used. So this is my main camera combination right here. So I always have these two camera bodies, typically with these two lenses on them, but sometimes I'll switch them out for zoom lenses. And so there's a third pocket here with, that does fit my extra zoom lens, whatever I need that to be. And so right now it's the Sony 12 to 24, F4 lens, which I use for mainly for real estate or interior photos, but I can also, if I need to, stick my giant telephoto lens in this bag as well. This is my Sony 70 to 200 F2.8 lens, which is a great lens, but it is so big and heavy, and I'm finding that I use it less and less, but there are times when I do need it, and so in those moments, it actually fits perfectly in that bottom little pocket there. And then there's actually a little top pocket here as well. And so, ah, oh, there's my spare batteries. So that's where my spare batteries live. I have this little Tenba case, which I love. It holds two spare batteries, which is more than enough for my Sony cameras. Oh, and this is my newest lens, which I haven't really had a chance to test out very much, but it's the Sony 28 to 60 F4 to 5.6 lens. It is Something that uh, my videographer friend told me is really great for using uh, if you're using your full frame camera on a gimbal. 
So I need to test this lens out a little bit more, but it was super cheap, super small, fits really well in that upper pocket to the point where I forgot I was even carrying it. So that's all the camera gear that I typically carry with me whenever I'm doing a paid photo shoot, usually a restaurant or food shoot, real estate, or an event. And for me, this is more than enough. I'm able to get all of my shots this way, but it's something that I've spent 10 years perfecting. When I first started out, I used to use these giant lenses, F2.8 lenses that were big, heavy, expensive, and in that case, you would probably need a bag that's bigger than 12 liters. But if you're shooting relatively compact like I am, then this smaller bag size is perfect for carrying all this gear. The next feature that I look for in my camera backpack was having an internal organization pocket. So having that is so important because when you're dealing with cameras, there are all kinds of small items that are so easy to lose and you just need a place in the bag where you know you can store them. Next is a laptop sleeve or a laptop compartment. So for this bag, that's located inside, right next to where all of your camera gear would go. And this is actually something I wish was a little bit bigger. My 15 inch MacBook Pro can sort of fit, but it is a super tight squeeze. I could actually get my computer to fit in this bag, but I couldn't take it out very easily. <laughs> so it could almost fit. So it's ideal for 13 inch laptops or tablets. But if you're using anything bigger than a 13 inch laptop, then you should probably get the 15 liter version of this bag. But having that laptop compartment in the bag is important on occasion. There, most of the time I don't need to carry my computer, but occasionally I'm doing client jobs where the client wants to look at the photos right after they're taken. And so in that case, I do need my laptop. And right now I'm using another bag if I need to bring my laptop with me. Feature number 10 is a small front pocket or back pocket for stowing your other small items. So things like your car keys, your wallet, maybe a small jacket, things that you might need access to, but you don't need them at the bottom of your camera bag. That's what these little pockets are great for. And so I love that there's a big pocket right here on the front of the bag. It's not the biggest pocket, but it can hold quite a few items and it is very easy to access. Another really essential pocket was a side water bottle pocket. I do actually carry a water bottle more often than I used to, but lately rather than a water bottle, bottle, I am sticking my ideal travel tripod in that water bottle pocket. This is the Manfrotto Element Traveler Tripod, which I just did a video about because I love it. It's so small and yet it can hold my full frame mirrorless camera bodies. And it's just such a great little travel tripod. And it fits perfectly on the side water bottle holder of this backpack. The next feature are easy access zippers. This is actually a feature I didn't know I need until it came with this backpack. And so you might notice that each of these zippers here has this little, I don't know how to describe this, it's almost like an ice hook or you know, like a little hammer or an anchor. Anchor is probably the best word for it. But it goes on the outside of the zipper here and it just makes it so easy to pull your zippers open and close. And so I love having this. I actually now want all of my backpacks in the future to have this huge anchor on them because it's so ergonomic and makes it so much easier to open and close my zippers. And the final feature that I was looking for in my ideal camera bag was having a price that wasn't too outrageous. Now, when it comes to camera gear, typically you get what you pay for. So I am willing to pay a fair amount of money for a good camera bag, but some of these newer ones are costing upwards of $300, $400 for these camera bags that in my opinion, aren't even the best because they're lacking one of these features that I just mentioned. But but this bag has all the features that I wanted, plus it's only $160 which is pretty reasonable for how well made it is. And based on my experience with think tank bags, I know that this bag is gonna hold up super well over time. And I'm just so pleased with this bag. Everything from the price, all of the features that I just mentioned, it's been my go-to bag for travel and also for taking to client photo shoots. Well, I hope you enjoyed this introduction to my brand new camera backpack. You'll be seeing a lot more of it here on this channel as well as our travel channel, Gemini Discover. So thank you for watching. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments below and I will see you in the next video.